And good evening, I'm Emily Flores. And I'm Glenn Mills. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Another day and still no sign of Gabby Petito, the young New York woman who traveled through Utah before disappearing. Well, the search for her growing more desperate by the hour and with few leads, Petito's family now demanding answers. Today, her parents remaining in the Grand Teton National Park area where she was last heard from. Her fiance, Brian Laundry, remains silent this evening. But tonight, new developments with the fiance. ABC4's Marcos Ortiz joining us live in studio tonight with the very latest chapter of Missing in Utah. Marcos. Gabby Petito's family, especially her mother, stayed out of the lim uh, limelight. Uh, she and her uh, second husband are in the Grand Teton area hoping that she's still alive. But without her boyfriend's cooperation, the chance of finding her are relying on a paper chase. The need from everybody here is help because the, the goal is still not met. And that goal is to bring Gabby home safe. And Gabby Petito's family pleads with everyone, including her fiance, Brian Laundry and his family to help bring her home. Gabby and Brian's tour of the country takes a different turn in August while in Moab. Police body cam catches them on tape after reports of the couple fighting on Main Street. So we need to calm down. No one's arrested, but police separate the couple for the night and then they're on the road again. She just they stay at this hotel near Salt Lake's airport before making their way to Ogden. According to the family's attorney, they head to the Grand Tetons in late August. Nicole received an additional text on the 25th that Gabby was in the Tetons. And then on the 27th, two days later, she received multiple texts where they talked back and forth where Nicole believes she was in the Tetons and was going to head north into Yellowstone. Around August 30th, Gabby's mother gets a text from Gabby's phone claiming no service in Yosemite. It's bogus. According to the family attorney, he says someone is using her phone. Which didn't make any sense because that was not part of their plan. But that text may prove vital in the investigation, according to a private investigator. Now, there's only one person in, in the entire planet that if they were responsible for Gabby's disappearance, that would bother to do that because everybody else un associated to Gabby would care less about sending a message to mom or not. He says there's no doubt the FBI is searching for geographic coordinates from where that message was sent. Uh, that phone probably registered somewhere like in Texas or Colorado or you know Nebraska, Georgia on the way to back to Florida. Meanwhile, police in Florida now say they have some items from laundry. Uh, the family attorney arranged uh, to get us some property that we were looking for. Um, and beyond that, no. Now, this is a missing person case, all right? And our focus is to find Gabby. My focus isn't to bring Brian in. Whatever you can do to make sure my daughter comes home, I'm asking for that help. There's nothing else that matters to me now. This... This girl right here, this is what matters. That is it. Anything else, it comes second to this. A tough situation for these parents. Now, federal authorities are sending out a bulletin of Gabby's disappearance at the Grand Teton National Park. There's a toll-free number, 1-800-CALL-FBI or 800-225-5324. Glenn? Marcos, a couple questions for you tonight. We know the family's in the Tetons area. Is there an actual official search going on in that area? And if so, where specifically? Well, they're actually doing a search using local and federal law authorities uh, enforcement, according to uh, uh, the attorney. But uh, where specifically, that's the big unknown. And talking with search groups here in Utah, they need to have a location. Once that happens, they can bring in search dogs but in talking with these experts both here in Utah and the Jackson Hole area, no one's been called in. Also a very interesting part of your story, Marcos, is when you mentioned the phone and that bogus text. So what else are they doing to try to gather evidence? Well, there's no doubt that they're getting Gabby's phone records to learn more of her whereabouts and also her credit card history. Now, if someone else used them after her disappearance, that gives law enforcement something to go on. But to do that with Brian Laundrie's property, they'll need a search warrant. Uh, once again today, we learned from police in Florida that his attorney actually turned over some property. They weren't specific on what that was. It's going to take time, but they're slowly building a case. Yeah, much more to come on this story. Thanks so much, Marcos. Appreciate it.